It's time to defend the land of the sun. We are going to see the Ryuzen 7 actually get into a proper brawl to defend their land, while the strongest member of their team goes head to head with Asta. Given how much trouble the last four members of the group gave him, the Black Bull is in for a world of pain. Can he step it up to match his new Ryuzen mentor in a fight? Let's get to it. We open chapter 345 where we left off last time. Ryuya has interrupted the midnight battle between Ichika and Asta to retrieve his loyal warrior. He's got no time to unpack the argument between the two of them and doesn't even try. With an attack on the nation coming, Ryuya needs everyone he can get ready for a fight and all the time possible to prepare for the assault. Ichika does not question her lord, simply bowing and getting ready to leave. Duty to both Ryuya and her country comes before her grudge against Asta. However, the young magic knight still does not know what is going on. He asks the shogun, what enemy could be this important? Ryuya does not tell him that the attackers are Sister Lily and two other paladins. He is sharp enough to understand why that would make Asta insist on going. He would figure this was his fault. Lucy is trying to find him and it would make Asta feel obliged to his host. They would be at risk because of him. And it is Sister Lily. But that would risk Asta's location being revealed to the Wizard Emperor. He is still their best shot at taking down Lucius. They cannot risk him being revealed here. Instead, the Shogun keeps his description vague, only saying that it is a threat capable of destroying the entire country. Naturally, this still leaves Asta wanting to help his hosts. But Ryuya deflects him masterfully. Yes, they do need Asta for this fight, but he's not ready. After all, he still hasn't perfected landing this at 10. So he should finish his training first, then join the Ryuzen in the battle. Surely Asta can agree to that. He did the very same thing during the Spade Kingdom raid, perfecting Devil Union mode before joining the fight. Asta has no objection to this. What could he say? Before the group goes their separate ways, however, the Shogun shares a warning with his young friend. He doesn't betray concern. Instead, Ryuya grins, completely unworried. But he notes that if Asta does not watch out in this fight, he is going to take one hell of a beating. Given the level of punishment Ichika and the others gave him in prior sparring matches, that is an impressive statement. How much worse can things get than being pounded into the ground? The Ryuzen are done messing around with Asta. Now, they are really going to push him to surpass his limits. Asta is already looking nervous, but there is no way he is backing down. We cut ahead to him training during the dragon attack and get a better look at the sanctuary he has been training in. This is some distance from the riverbank where Ryuya found him and Ichika. They have moved to a clearing deep within a pine forest. There is a mighty sakura tree in the center with a handful of blossoms on its winding bows. Perfect spot for a nice dramatic sword fight. This spot seems to be in a small sinkhole. On every side of the clearing, we see stairs leading down to this point with a tori separating each flight. This place is clearly spiritual and might have some inherent enchantment to it. If these gates have the same magic as the one that sealed the shadow dragon, perhaps they will help conceal Asta from the paladins. Of course, that is assuming the training session leaves them intact, which given how Asta tends to fight, is kind of a long shot. It'll be a miracle if that pretty Sakura tree is still standing once they're done. We see the Ryuzen member who was training with Asta last chapter making another strike. He's grinning like Jack as he goes for an overhead slice, given all new strength by this at 10. It is strong enough to cleave right through the stone steps, sending fragments flying as Asta only just manages to dodge away. The young Black Bull is already in Devil Union and tries for his own to 10 while flying away. Thinking to himself that because his opponent is going all out, maybe his defenses will be sloppy. However, this was a forlorn hope. The shirtless Ryuzen dodges it without even having to try, just ducking through the air to one side with a swoosh. The samurai rolls over the ground, reducing a small shrine to rubble with his backhand while pinning Asta to the ground. A one-handed grip is enough to restrain Asta completely. This man's strength is ridiculous, even without magic. It is here that we learn his name, Mushoga Takeoga, and he is not as happy as he looks. Surely he is enjoying beating the feathers out of Asta, but the rest of his team are fighting a giant five-headed dragon. That's awesome, much cooler than one punk kid. Mushoga really wants to join that fight, but he is as loyal to Ryuya as Ichika is, even if his tone is a bit more coarse. When the Shogun told him to train Asta, the Samurai decided that he was going to do it right. And that means beating him to hell and back until he gets the Zaten down. Asta is sweating. As a total exercise lover, he's got to still be in awe of this guy's crazy levels of strength. Even in Devil Union, with Libe's enhancements to his reflexes and muscles, Asta is sure that he has no chance in a straight up Zaten exchange with Mushoga. He is more experienced, quicker, and three times as tough. 
But this fight isn't quite as uneven as it looks. Asta looks up towards a tree in the center of this arena. There is a third fighter in this battle, though he is not getting involved directly. Instead, the other Yuzen 7 member, who had joined Mushoga to train Asta, is sitting up in the tree and strumming on his shamisen. This guy is Tenman Yashiki Fujio, and he is not just being lazy. Nor is he only here to provide his friend with dramatic theme music. As Asta explains, the shamisen music is infused with magic. Fujio's power is helping heal the young black bull and reducing the damage he's taking from Mushoga. That's right, we now have a bard in Black Clover providing buffs and healing via the power of music. And he's got an adorable scarf wearing cat on his shoulder. I guess now that Nero is a person and Charmy is on another continent, we clearly need a new cute mascot. Asta thanks the musical warrior for the help and the cat meows, cheering the foreign kid on enthusiastically. Fujio himself is more sanguine. He is not the type to get emotionally worked up. The musician just notes that Ryukun wanted him to lend Asta his power. Because of that order, he's got the Black Bull's back for now. He will keep him in the fight with Mushoga for as long as he can. The use of Kun is interesting. It is a very affectionate honorific to use with someone who is supposed to be your superior. Fujio is a person who speaks about Ryuya with extremely affectionate terms. Even Mushoga's crass description of the Shogun seems pretty close. Hmm. The Seven sure are loyal to him, aren't they? Asta thanks Fujio a second time as he charges towards Takeoga, locking blades with the mighty warrior once again. For the first time, he is able to match the enemy warrior's strength with muscle of his own. Asta is not giving up on his training anytime soon, and he is far from weak. Mushoga laughs, cheering Asta on over their blades. It is clear he is starting to care for Asta, his dismissive words aside. He can tell why Ryuya finds his foreign boy so interesting. The fervent enthusiasm explains why he has been called in for a simple training mission. All the same, he is still not going easy on Asta, breaking the lock and pushing him back with a powerful blow. The samurai declares that at this rate, the Black Bull will never master the ten as he is still hesitating far too much. Asta is surprised by that. He doesn't think that he has been hesitating at all. After all, he has been giving it his all. Takayoga calls him a fool for claiming that. He can see the truth in Asta's blade, one that the Black Bull is in denial of. Subconsciously, he hesitates to strike. His conviction, even now, is wavering. That is a line in the sand between Asta and this shirtless samurai. Takayoga does not think. He just cuts whatever is in front of him. As far as he's concerned, that is the pinnacle of strength. The samurai boasts that he can cut anything without fail as he launches a mighty Zatan at Asta. While the Black Bull is able to defend himself, the aftershock of Takeyoga strike is enough to smash no less than six shrine gates behind him, carving a chasm through the steps beneath them. He sure does cut a lot of stuff. But he did not cut Asta, even with the kid right in front of him. Is Takeyoga a bit less bloodthirsty than he acts? He has a different view of it, however. Grinning at Asta, the samurai says that he is strong because of that belief. He views himself as being able to cut anything before him and that is what gives him the strength to do so. That is why he does not hesitate. That sense of absolute certainty and faith in himself. That is what Asta has been missing. The Black Bull is silent, eyes wide, teeth gritted. He doesn't want to acknowledge the truth of what Takayoga is saying. It undercuts the pride he had felt when he first manifested these ten. But inwardly, he knows the samurai is right. He has been hesitating. He has had too many failures and they cut deep. He couldn't protect Sister Lily, couldn't beat Lucius. He has been impatient, convinced himself that he couldn't be strong anymore. He couldn't win against Ichika, no matter how much effort he tried to put into the battle. That one moment of victory, learning the new technique, has not been enough to overcome all the things weighing on Asa's shoulders. Sometimes surpassing your limits is not as simple as screaming and trying harder. Sometimes no amount of effort is enough to see you through. You can try your hardest, give it your all, put everything you have into the fight, and still lose. And Asta does not know how to process that. Even after his fight with the Dark Triad, they were vaguely on his level. Strong, but approachable. Lucius is entirely outside anything he's had to deal with, and he still doesn't have any real way to deal with that. Even with the Zaten, hitting him really hard is not enough to inspire a ton of faith against the Wizard Emperor. Asta wants to be sure of himself. He wants to be confident. But the truth is, he really is wavering. He can't be sure of himself or his ability anymore. And that like this, he can't do his thing. Can't push beyond his limits. He can't become the Wizard King with this weighing on him. He has to find conviction. Something similar to Takeyoga's belief in his own strength. He can stand on something different, but he needs something to be sure of. Something that he can give his strength and certainty in a fight. 
Fujio strums his shamisen, speeding up the tempo. It is time to push things to a new height. Picking up on the mood, Takayoga yells at Asta. The shirtless samurai brags that he is the strongest warrior of all. This boy cannot afford to screw around or give it less than 100%. If they're going to fight, Asta has to really give it everything. It's not clear if Asta hears him, however. His mind is still on the Clover Kingdom and the root of all his self-doubt. And that is surprisingly not Lucius. It is Yuno. Asta has always looked up to his brother. He considered him his rival, the one he had to face and surpass if he wanted to become the Wizard King. That is usually a source of strength, but it has turned against him now. All of Asta's doubt and inadequacy following his defeat by Lucius just gets worse when he knows that there is someone better out there. Asta does not view Yuno as his equal, but as his superior, the person he has to strive to beat. At every point where he failed, his brother should have been able to succeed. Yuno could have protected Sister Lily. Yuno could have defeated Lucius. Yuno rose through the ranks of the Magic Knights faster than Asta. He just kept on getting stronger and stronger. There are mixed feelings here. As much as Asta loves his brother, he has to envy his seeming strength, his eternal calm. It always seems like nothing phases Yuno. And you know what? Those times the implacable Wind Mage has broken down, Asta was not there to see it. From his brother's perspective, Yuno must look borderline invincible. You can buy that Asta thinks the Golden Dawn Knight would somehow succeed against Lucius. Even if logically, he probably has no more chance than Asta did. Takayoga can sense the change in his opponent. Asta has finally realized what is holding him back. It is time to wrap things up. The samurai calls out for Asta to hit him as hard as he can. He is strong enough to take everything he's got. All the rage, all the sorrow, and all the doubt. Asta's eyes shift, and we see a great flash of light. One similar to what we saw when he first adopted Devil Union. Could this be a new form? Something more powerful than regular Devil Union. A more potent, perfected version of the Zaten. What happened when Asta finally let out all his emotions and power into one mighty blow? Well, we'll just have to wait and see next chapter. As we cut on over to the old Yami hometown, where the five members of the Ryuzen are ready to fight the invasion from Lucius' forces. The holy five-headed dragon has cleared the bay, and it is now clear how ridiculously big it is. It is many times the size of nearby buildings, and as it draws closer, it only seems even more impossibly huge. With all five heads towering over the town, the Ryuzen are barely visible when set against it. The heads are a bit unfocused, however, sniffing and looking every which way. They are searching for prey. On the rooftop, we see the one unnamed member of the Ryuzen 7 clutching her katana, and she is shaking like a leaf. The blade rattles in her scabbard, no matter how tightly she tries to clutch it. It is the last thing you would expect to see from a member of a group of legendary warriors. The samurai seems to have forgotten how she even got here, and has no idea what she's supposed to do against this ridiculously giant dragon. A fairly relatable mood. The samurai is muttering that this is clearly the end. They are all as good as dead. They are up against a ludicrously massive mystical beast. The dire warrior has no hope for victory and no trust in her abilities. As far as she's concerned, she's convinced that today is the last day of her stupid, miserable life. Sister Lily has approached the group and seems honestly apologetic that she has to fight someone so unenthusiastic about it. Master Lucius ordered this attack after all, but she promises to at least make the nervous woman's death as painless as possible. She's tried to show some basic humanity despite her newfound inhuman status. But Ichika is far less gentle with her comrade than the paladin is. The samurai has no time for gentleness. There is an enormous monster to slay. She barks and orders the other woman to cut out the nervous blabbering. She needs to draw her sword and fight. Interestingly though, despite her harsh manner, Ichika uses the reverent honorific, Dono, when addressing her. That is not the sort of behavior you would expect from Ichika. She doesn't usually offer respect to anyone outside of Ryuya. She clearly has more trust in this easily frightened warrior than is readily apparent. The nervous Kenzokaku remains on edge, calling her comrade an Oni but in turn, referring to her as Ichika-chan. It is downright bizarre to hear someone use such friendly terms in relation to the abrasive Ichika. Banter aside, they are probably closer than they look. And the samurai proves it as she vaults into the air, jumping past Sister Lily. Before the paladin can even react, Kenzo Kaku has already cut her cheek and severed the tip of her curved horn with one perfect cut of the blade. A harsh laugh rings out over the town as we are properly introduced to the last member of the Yuzen 7. Kenzo Kaku Genojo Morifuyu. The samurai is grinning bloodlust in her eyes. All her fear from before vanished the instant she drew her blade. She may even be an altar, an entirely different personality. 
Morifuyu promises Lily that she is going to spill her blood all over the battlefield, clearly excited by the chance for a fight. She has gone from being a shy coward to a full-on genocider. Sister Lily remains shocked at this woman's actions, even as her perfect body begins to heal. Still, the paladin does not seem worried, dismissing the samurai as simply vulgar. She seems more disgusted at her impolite manner than afraid of her. And that is where we leave the battle for the moment as the chapter comes to a close. Will the five Ryuzen members be a match for Sister Lily and her crew? What has Asa managed to unlock with this final revelation? Let us know your thoughts and predictions in the comments down below. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.